Many have long speculated on who Babylon the Great really is. Rome has been the prime candidate for many, as well as New York. But neither of these is the true Babylon. The Bible tells us that this Babylon is a mystery to the world, but the Bible declares plainly exactly where mystery Babylon is located. It's not the original Babylon in Iraq. But yet its practices are identical to Babylon's. The Babylonian religious system revolved around the worship of the heavens. The sun, moon and stars. The crescent and star symbol is the very key, not only to who mystery Babylon is, but also to the identity of the beast. The crescent and star is known to be the symbol of Islam. But these ancient and demonic symbols were also the very symbols of Baal Hammon. Baal. The ancient Mesopotamian false god, mentioned in the Bible, who was worshipped together with Ashtarath, the star goddess. These symbols go all the way back to Nimrod and Semiramis. Semiramis was the wife of Nimrod, but she was also his mother. This disgusting harlot started all the false religions of the world. When God changed the people's languages and they stopped building Nimrod's Tower of Babel, this cult of Nimrod and Semiramis continued to spread into those divided nations, most of which have a god and goddess as the basis of their false religion, which began with Nimrod and Semiramis. Their cult went from one empire to the next. In Egypt, they were called Osiris and Isis. In Assyria, Asher and Ishtar. In Babylon, Bel and Belit. In Persia, Mithra and Anahita. In Greece, Helios and Artemis. In Rome, Apollo and Diana. Throughout the Bible, they are mainly called Baal and Ashtaroth, the Queen of Heaven. In the Book of Acts, they are called Moloch and Rephan. You even took along the tent of Moloch, the star of your god Rephan, and the images you made in order to worship them. But throughout all their name changes, one thing remained the same the symbols by which these false gods are identified the crescent and star. In Egypt, the crescent and star was carried on the head of Isis. And the Apis bull also carried the sun disk image of Isis between his crescent shaped horns. And if you take a closer look, you can see that the real author of these symbols is the serpent. And he is the one receiving the worship through these symbols of the crescent and star. The Bible tells us that the serpent is Satan. During Roman times, Semiramis was worshipped under the name Diana. Diana's image was once again the crescent and star of Islam. And they too bowed down and worshipped her image in the form of a meteorite, which fell from heaven. Because the meteorite depicted her astrological moon and star image. When the apostles tried to minister to the people in Ephesus, all of them with one voice went on crying out for about two hours, Great is Diana of Ephesus. And having quieted the crowd, the city clerk said, Men of Ephesus, for what man is there who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is the temple keeper of the great goddess Diana and of the image fallen from heaven? Clearly the image which fell from heaven was a meteorite. And the worshippers of Diana all worshipped her in the same way, by shouting great, great, great is Diana. This is exactly how the Muslims praise Allah. And they bow toward the city of Mecca, repeating Allahu Akbar over and over again. For Allahu Akbar means Allah is great. And it's the very same cry heard by the worshippers of Diana as they bow toward the great city of Mecca. Mecca has become just like Ephesus, the city which held the meteorite image, which fell down from heaven. They too chanted that Diana was great. For the Muslims, just like Ephesus, also bow down to an image which fell from heaven. And Muslims are seen kissing and caressing the stone, as if the stone was a woman. Indeed Mecca is the great harlot, whose worshippers call her great. And it's the very title, written on her forehead. Babylon the Great. When the angel took John into the desert, to see this harlot, he told him that it wasn't just a false religious system, but a religious city, as well. The only religious city, which can be found in a desert, is Mecca. And shockingly, 
the very symbol of the star of Semiramis, the harlot, is still being worshipped today, by Muslims around the world. In the form of the Kaaba stone. The Muslims claim that the Kaaba stone, was a star which fell from heaven. It's the very same star symbol of Semiramis, the Queen of Heaven. And she is still being worshipped today, exactly where the angel, said this harlot could be found. In the wilderness, or desert. Babylon is not Rome, neither is it New York, for neither of those places, are found in a desert. The last time Israel was in the desert, they were also worshipping a false god. The golden calf, which Moses smashed. This was the same bull calf god, from Egypt. The bull god, carried the very symbol, of the harlot Isis, between its crescent-shaped horns. Thanks to the discoveries, of Ron Wyatt, we know exactly that this false worship, took place in the desert of Saudi Arabia. Where the altar for the golden calf still stands, kept secret by the Saudi Arabian government. The very same country and desert, where the Jews were worshipping this golden calf beast, and star symbol of the harlot, is the same country and desert, in which we find, the city, of Mecca. Mecca, has become the global center, of moon and star worship. The exact same religion of ancient Babylon. Before Islam, Mecca was a city, dedicated to many false gods. The false goddess, Alat, was the wife of Allah. Alat was the moon goddess, and fertility goddess Semiramis which Satan has used from the beginning. Her shrine was the Kaaba, which housed Alat's most famous idol, a black stone meteorite. Muhammad took the city of Mecca in 632, and Muhammad entered her shrine, and destroyed Alat's idols. Yet her black stone idol, was preserved. And Muhammad even helped to position her black stone idol, in the east wall of the Kaaba. Indeed the Kaaba stone, is the idol of the harlot. The angel told John that this harlot sits on many waters. Then he said to me, The waters which you saw, where the harlot sits, are peoples, multitudes, nations and languages. The angel told John, that the waters were not seas, but people from all over the world. From many peoples, nations and languages. This is an amazing description, seeing as the Muslims come from all over the world, for the Hajj. These people flow in, and circle around the Kaaba, like water. Indeed this harlot does sit, on many people's nations and languages. And they all fall down, and worship the image of Semiramis or Diana, which fell from heaven. The Muslim call to prayer, exactly mirrors, Nebuchadnezzar's form of worship. Nebuchadnezzar set up an image, in the plain of Jura. When all the people in his kingdom heard the music, which was a call to prayer, they all had to bow down, toward the image which he set up. Or, he said they would be put to death. This is identical, to the Islamic form of worship. It's exactly the same form of Babylonian worship, instituted by Nebuchadnezzar. And at the call to prayer, Muslims just like the Babylonians, all fall down and worship an image. The worship of Bel, in Babylon, revolved around sun worship. And astoundingly the Islamic prayer times, are based on the five positions of the sun, throughout the day. In fact, the five prayer times, have to be judged by things like. What the sun's color is. How long the shadow is. Or whether there is light left in the sky. You can find out from Wikipedia how Islamic prayer times, are tied, to the sun, itself. The very beast system of Babylonian worship is already in place, waiting for the speaking image of the beast. Which may, be the very Kaaba stone, itself. Which Muhammad declared, would one day speak, and give wisdom to all who touch it. Very few people have connected the dots to Islam. Those who refuse to bow toward the Islamic beast's image, when the call from the minarets is heard, throughout the Islamic empire, will be put to death. Just like they were, under Nebuchadnezzar. In Babylon, they worshipped the sun god, through the magic square. And the Babylonian priests wore these sun seal amulets, as seals of protection, from the gods themselves. They believed that the numbers 1 to 36 represented the 36 constellations which were also gods. And the total of all the numbers, equaled 666. 
which also represented the sun god, which was their king. Hidden in the Babylonian square, is a six-sided symbol. A symbol, which encompassed all their false gods. This shape, creates a three-dimensional, cube, or house, for these gods. Which is exactly the shape, of the Kaaba, itself. But that's not all. Seeing as the Babylonian sun god, was the supreme ruler, over these other gods, or constellations. Its number, was placed outside, the square. The very same position, in which we find the 666, on the Babylonian seal. Is the exact same position, we find the Kaaba stone, built into the Kaaba's wall. Without doubt, the Kaaba stone, is intricately connected, with Babylonian sun worship, and worship of the heavens. The very name Kaaba, in English, means square, or, cube. It's the same magic square, the Babylonians used, to worship their sun god. The black Kaaba, represents the sun, around which all the Muslims, like stars, revolve. Some prominent Islamists, have said that Muslims circling the Kaaba, resembles the orbit, of the galaxy. Wikipedia says, it has been proposed, for example, that the act of Tawaf closely resembles the shape of a galaxy, when viewed from above. This circling, is interesting, because the very place, where Nebuchadnezzar placed his idol, was called Jura. And Jura means, circle. Muslims portray Allah, in symbols of the sun, and star. And you can clearly see, on the Kaaba doors, that the name of Allah, is portrayed, with sun, symbols. In the Bible, which has been translated into Arabic, there is something very surprising. Found in the Arabic number, 666, is a word. And that word, is stone. As in, Kaaba stone. The Bible is telling us, that the 666, is directly linked to the Kaaba stone, of Islam. The Bible describes the beast, as coming from the sea. So it was interesting to discover, that in nautical sea miles, the distance, from the Kaaba in Mecca, to the Dome of the Rock, in Jerusalem, is exactly 666 nautical miles. Muhammad, called the Black Stone, Yamin Allah, which means, the right hand, of Allah. But in the Bible, Jesus himself, is referred to as the right hand of God. And he sits at his Father's right hand. He is also called, the Corner Stone. So this stone is literally a replacement, for Christ. Muhammad also declared that by doing the Hajj, which is making the pilgrimage to Mecca, once per year, circling around the Kaaba stone seven times, and then touching it. That Allah, uses the black stone, to take your sins away. Once again we can see Christ being replaced by this stone. For the Bible says, it is Jesus, who takes away our sins, through his sacrifice. And Muhammad has replaced Jesus Christ, with a stone, fallen from heaven. Moses clearly said, and beware, lest you raise your eyes to heaven, and when you see the sun and the moon and the stars, all the host of heaven, you be drawn away, and bow down to them, and serve, them. Deuteronomy 419. Without doubt Muslims, are clearly disobeying God, by bowing down to a star fallen from heaven. Acts 739 says, but our ancestors refused to obey him. They pushed him aside and wished that they could go back to Egypt. It was then that they made an idol in the shape of a bull, offered sacrifice to it, and had a feast in honor, of what they themselves had made. So God, turned away from them, and gave them over to worship the stars of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. God says he will turn away, from those who worship the host of heaven. For this has been the religion, of the heathen, throughout the generations of the world. And it's also, the very religion of Islam. The angel told John, that the religious city of Babylon, had a name written on her forehead. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. The very name of Mecca, means mother, of all settlements. Indeed Mecca, is the mother of Islamic cities around the world. And the abominations of Baal, which top all her Islamic mosques. And she is mother of Islamic terrorism and responsible for the deaths of Christians slaughtered in the Middle East and around the world. 
Revelation 17 6 says, And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs, of Jesus. This false religion, is drunk with the blood of Jihad. For she advances her religion by slaughter. But the main reason she is called mother, is because she is the biggest, false religion, in the world. She is the mother, of all false religions. Note how the Bible, says the Christians will die in the last days, by being beheaded. And no other country, beheads more people, than Saudi Arabia. Without doubt, Mecca, is the mother of Jihad, and responsible for the deaths of Christians, by beheading. The angel told John in Revelation 17 9, that this mysterious city, also sits on seven hills. And Mecca, does indeed sit on seven hills. The Bible tells us that this mysterious Babylon is located near the sea. For when God causes the beast and his ten kings, to destroy Babylon, all that trade by sea, behold the smoke of her burning. As if she had been nuked. The biggest shipping lane in the world, is the Red Sea. And Mecca, sits right on this trade route. It's from here that these ships, will behold Mecca burning. Revelation 18:17 says, All the ship's captains and passengers, the sailors and all others who earned their living on the sea, stood a long way off, and cried out as they saw the smoke, from the flames that consumed her. There never has been another city like this great city. Isaiah 21:9 says, Babylon has fallen, has fallen. And all the graven images of her gods, he has smashed to the ground. John saw the same thing, in the book of Revelation. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen. But where did Isaiah, say this harlot could be found? Isaiah 21 says, This is the prophecy, against the desert, by the sea. Mystery Babylon, is a city located, in a desert, by the sea. John saw the same thing. And he carried me away into a desert, by the Spirit. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast. The prophet Jeremiah saw the destruction of the Arabian Peninsula. Edom will become an object of horror. No one will live there, or dwell in it. Hear what the Lord has planned against Edom. What he purposed against all who live in Timon. At the sound of their fall, the earth will tremble. The cry will resound, to the Red Sea. The very sea, that mystery Babylon sits near, is the Red Sea. But where is Edom, and where is Timon? In scripture, the ancient nation of Edom, stretches from Yemen, Timon, to northern Saudi Arabia, Dedan. Ezekiel 25 says, I will stretch out my hand against Edom, and kill both man and beast. I will lay it waste, from Timon, to Dedan. Isaiah 21 a prophecy against the desert by the sea. Against Duma. Someone calls to me, from Seir. A prophecy against Arabia. You caravans of dead knights, who camp in the thickets of Arabia. You who live in Tema. Within one year, all the splendor of Kidar. Will come to an end. Where is Duma, Seir, Arabia, Tema and Kidar? It's in the Arabian Peninsula, in modern-day Saudi Arabia. Exactly as the prophets John, Jeremiah and Isaiah said. Arabia is known in Arab because Al Jazeera, Al Arabia. Meaning the Arab island. Or, the desert by the sea. The original Babylon is not located near the sea. But mystery Babylon, is. And the ten horns, which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the harlot, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. God warns his people, to flee mystery Babylon. Up, escape to Zion. You who dwell in daughter Babylon. Run away from Babylon. Run for your lives. You shouldn't die because of Babylon's crimes. This is the time for the vengeance of the Lord. He will pay the people of Babylon back, for what they have done. Babylon was a golden cup in the Lord's hand. It made the whole world drunk. The nations drank its wine. That is why the nations have gone insane. Sharpen the arrows. Gather the shields. Jehovah has raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, which is Iran. For his plan is against Babylon, to destroy it. 
yes Iran, will be amongst the Beast Alliance nations, who destroy Mecca and Saudi Arabia. And Iran, is going to use its nuclear weapons, against Saudi Arabia. Many have wondered, what the flying scroll is in the book of Zechariah. And behold! A flying scroll! And he said to me, What do you see? And I answered, I see a flying scroll. And he said to me, This is the curse, that goes forth over the face of the whole earth. I will bring it forth, says Jehovah of hosts. And it shall enter into the house of the thief, and into the house of him who swears falsely by my name. And it shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall devour it, and its timber and its stones. This flying scroll, is a nuclear missile. For God tells Zechariah, that it will devour timber, and stones. And God even told us, from where this nuclear missile would come. God said, they would build a house for it in the land of Shinar. And it shall be established, and set there, on its own base. The land of Shinar, includes parts, of both Iraq, and Iran. But why would the beast, the Islamic Antichrist and his caliphate, want to destroy Saudi Arabia? Because she is still, a harlot. The kings of the earth, practiced sexual immorality with her. And the people of the world, became drunk from drinking the wine of her immorality. How do the kings, commit sexual immorality with Saudi Arabia? And what is the wine? Which Saudi Arabia has, which has made the earth drunk? This whore, lives in a desert. And yet she produces, wine in this desert. What is the wine of the desert, which has made the earth drunk today? What wine have the kings of the earth, prostituted themselves, and their countries, to obtain? Oil. But how can we be sure, that the whore's wine, is oil? This is the time when the Lord will rescue Zion and take vengeance on her enemies. The rivers of Edom will turn into tar. And the soil will turn into sulfur. The whole country, will burn. Like tar. Tar is simple, crude oil. The beast and his alliance, which includes Iran, will destroy Saudi Arabia. And its oil, will burn. Because the beast wants full control over the Middle East's oil. And Saudi Arabia, will refuse to stop supplying the West. Which the Islamic Caliphate, wants to control. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the Valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will fight with them there for my people and for my inheritance Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations, and divided my land. And they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for a prostitute, and sold a girl for wine. So that they might drink. After the Islamic Antichrist conquers Jerusalem, he will divide the land up, amongst the Islamic nations. And the children will be sold to the Arab nations for prostitutes, and traded for wine. Which is oil. The kings of the earth, have been in bed, with Saudi Arabia. Because Saudi Arabia owns one-fifth, of the world's proven oil fields. Saudi Arabia, sells her oil across the world, especially to the west. The Islamic beast hates Saudi Arabia, because of her whoring economic policies. But God hates Saudi Arabia, for a different reason. Not only is Saudi Arabia, whoring her oil to countries, in exchange for more Islamic control over the world. But Saudi Arabia, is also the greatest whore on earth. Because she is also spreading her false religion to the world, through Mecca. And the ten horns which you saw, on the beast, these will hate the harlot, and will make her desolate and naked. And they will eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. If you think it's unlikely, that the beast would attack Mecca, think again. The Islamic Caliphate, has already burned the Kaaba once. When it bombed the city of Mecca. Iran sees Saudi Arabia as a traitor for sending oil to Islam's hated enemies. Islam itself, has declared, that Mecca will be destroyed. They have said, the Mahdi will rule the world from Jerusalem, because Mecca, will be destroyed. Some Islamic prophecies, also declare that other areas of Saudi Arabia, will be destroyed as well. The flourishing state of Jerusalem, will be when Medina is in ruins. The ruined state of Medina will be, when the Great War comes. Many have missed this next verse, which describes people, crying over this city, and casting dust on their heads. 
and they cast dust on their heads, and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas alas! That great city! When last did you see a Westerner, casting dust on their heads, in anguish? It's not a Western custom. But it's still, an Arab Middle East custom. To cast dust on one's head in anguish. And Babylon, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited forever, nor shall it be lived in, from generation to generation. Nor shall the Arabian pitch his tent there. Nor shall the shepherds make their flocks, lie down there. Why would the Arabian be pitching his tent in the Vatican? Or in New York? The scriptures are clear. Babylon is in Saudi Arabia, that is where the Arabian pitches his tent, and where the flocks lie down. Mystery Babylon, is a city of slavery. The merchants of the earth, will weep and mourn, over her because, no one buys their cargoes anymore, human beings, sold for slaves. Saudi Arabia, has been condemned by numerous human rights groups. For its horrific treatment, of an imported foreign labor force. Saudi Arabia, is also the home, of one of the largest sex slavery trades, in the world. The harlot believes that no one can see her atrocious behavior. She boasts of seeing no sorrow. In her heart she boasts, I sit enthroned, as queen. I am not a widow. I will see no sorrow. Saudi Arabia, tries to hide the terrible conditions, of the lower class. And attempts, to cover up the abominable sex trade. And to conceal the decadent lifestyles, of the rich oil barons, who control Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is renowned, for the unparalleled decadence, of the ruling class. While her workforce, slaves away in terrible conditions. And she spends money, like a queen, according to scripture. Merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen and purple, silk and scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every kind of object of ivory, every kind of object of most precious wood, bronze, iron, and marble, and cinnamon and incense, perfume and frankincense, wine and oil, fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots, and bodies and souls of men. The harlot Babylon is a big importer and a massive consumer. Saudi Arabia imports these exact same goods. Saudi Arabia is famous for its gold and jewelry markets. Mecca and its suburbs import everything because their entire country is a desert. The lustful, oil countries of the world have made Saudi Arabia rich beyond her wildest dreams. And she is decked with gold and precious jewels. And Mecca is the city that sits as a queen upon the heart of the beast empire, which is the Islamic Caliphate. Soon the beast empire will be revived. And the Islamic Antichrist will proclaim that he is the true Messiah and Mahdi. And the false prophet will perform miracles to deceive many. And these miracles will falsely claim Islam to be the one true religion. And that following the Mahdi will bring peace, money, and joy to the world. And people will flock to see, the miracles being done, by Islam. Jesus warns people not to go out to the desert to see the so-called Messiah. If you are told that the Messiah is out in the desert, don't go there. Matthew 24 26. The desert Jesus was likely referring to, is Mecca. And Jesus warns his people, not to go to this desert, to see this false Messiah. Jesus also said, that there would be false wonders, being done in Jerusalem, by false prophets. A false prophet, is someone who points to a false messiah. Indeed there will be many Muslims, trying to deceive even the elect Christians, into following the Mahdi. And there will be great signs, performed by Satan, when this Mahdi is revealed. 2 Thessalonians 2 9 says, when the wicked one appears, Satan will pretend to work all kinds of miracles, wonders, and signs. Lost people, will be fooled by his evil deeds. They could be saved, but they will refuse to love the truth and accept it. So God will make sure that they are fooled, into believing a lie. God says these people, will be deceived by these miracles of Satan because they refuse to love the truth and accept it. But what is the truth? It's that God became flesh, born of a woman, 
and suffered and died on the cross, for our sins. And was raised again from the dead. But the Islamic Antichrist and false prophet, will preach the exact opposite of the Bible. And it will be a great delusion and a lie, and this lie will be attended by the signs and miracles of Satan. And people will be drawn to Islam. You have been warned. Mystery Babylon is the mother, of all cults. Now we know, that Babylon, is Mecca. And the beast, is the coming revived Islamic Caliphate, and its king. The Book of Daniel, tells us the story behind the little horn Antichrist, and the area, from which he arises. Daniel describes the conquest of King Darius, in Persia, by Alexander the Great. The Grecian kingdom is described as a goat. And the Persian kingdom the ram. A goat came rushing out of the west, moving so fast that his feet didn't touch the ground. He had one prominent horn, between his eyes. He came toward the ram, which I had seen standing beside the river, and rushed at him with all his force. I watched him attack the ram. He was so angry, that he smashed into him and broke the two horns. The ram had no strength to resist. He was thrown to the ground, and trampled on, and there was no one who could save him. Alexander the Great conquered Persia and King Darius. The goat grew more and more arrogant, but at the height of his power, his horn was broken. In its place four prominent horns came up, each pointing in a different direction. At the height of Alexander's conquest, he suddenly died. And his four generals divided his goat empire between themselves. The Bible, then describes the little horn Antichrist, coming from one, of the parts of Alexander's divided kingdom. Out of one of these four horns, grew a little horn, whose power extended toward the south and the east and toward the promised land. It grew strong enough to attack the army of heaven. These were the divisions of Alexander's kingdom, and it's only from one of these divisions which the Antichrist can appear. He cannot come from Rome, or America. Because the Bible clearly says, that he comes, out of one of the four horns, which represent the divided kingdom of Alexander. And Alexander's four generals, never extended their kingdoms further than the Middle East. And the farthest northern part, was Greece. Daniel chapter 11, narrows the area even more, by calling the Antichrist the King of the North. The King of the North, was the Seleucus kingdom, which included Turkey, Syria, Iraq and Iran. And it's this area we should be watching for the Antichrist to appear. Let's discover where the Bible says the seat of the beast is located. The Bible even tells us, which country to watch, for the revival of the beast. It's Turkey. And it's the very country, which is now stepping forward, trying to revive the Ottoman Empire. Calling it the Neo-Ottoman Order. Turkey is positioning itself as a peace mediator, in the Middle East. Israel, will sign the seven-year peace agreement, with Turkey. And put their trust in Turkey, relying on them for security, in the Middle East. But they will literally, be signing a covenant, with the Antichrist himself. Who will be mediating this peace deal between Israel, and many, other Muslim nations. The Bible calls this, a covenant with death and clearly tells us, that Israel, will rely on the Turkish Antichrist, until he attacks them. Turkey was the seat of the Ottoman Empire, but it was also the seat, of the Eastern Roman Empire. Jesus himself told us, that the beast would come from Turkey. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos, which is in Turkey, write. He who has the sharp sword with two edges, says these things. I know your works, and where you live, even where Satan's seat is, where Satan dwells. Jesus is telling us, not only that Satan dwells, in Turkey Pergamos, but that his very seat of power, is in Turkey, not Rome. Turkey was the Eastern Roman Empire. Rome moved its capital to Constantinople. It's from there, which we should expect to see the prince, who comes mediating a peace deal with Israel. Now let's compare the next verse where Satan gives that very same seat, to the beast. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth, as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon, gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. 
Did you catch that? Where did Jesus say the seat of Satan was? Pergamos, Turkey. This is the very same seat of power that Satan gives to the Antichrist beast. The Antichrist's seat is in Turkey. The Book of Daniel calls him the Little Horn. Surprisingly, Istanbul, which was the very capital of both the Roman and Ottoman Empire, is shaped just like a little horn. And its very name is the Golden Horn. The Bible describes the beast having had seven heads, which described the kings and their kingdoms. These were Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome. And the Ottoman Empire became the seventh head. The angel said that the seven heads were seven kings. Because unless the king of the empire falls, the kingdom remains alive. So when Rome fell, did the Roman Empire fall? No, it moved its king and capital to Turkey. And that kingly line continued right up until it was defeated by the Ottoman Empire. Then Rome and its king fell. The Ottoman Empire is the missing seventh head of the beast. And it has come and gone. Without people even realizing it was there. And yet it clearly left its mark on Jerusalem. For the Ottoman Empire is the same empire which rebuilt Jerusalem as it stands today. But how do we know that the Ottoman Empire was the seventh head? Well, from the time of Egypt, right up until 1923, and the end of the Ottoman Empire, there has been an unbroken line of empires or heads, ruling the Middle East. The Beast Empire has been alive from Egypt to the Ottoman Empire. But where is the Beast now? It's dead. And it's dead, because it was only given seven heads. And the last empire, which was the Ottoman Empire, was given a deadly wound, which killed the whole beast. And there was no empire to take its place. So it died. And it descended into the bottomless pit. Wikipedia says, the empire fought against the Allies in the First World War. And at the end of the war, it was partitioned by the Allies. The Bible says the head of the beast was wounded to death by the sword. The sword, which cut into the beast's seventh, and final head was World War I. And that same sword, of the Allied nations, divided up, or cut up, the Ottoman Empire. Into the Middle East countries we have today. The Bible says, And I saw one of his heads, as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast. But its deadly wound will be healed. When the seventh head of the Ottoman Empire comes back to life, as an eighth empire. And it will ascend from the bottomless pit, and its wound will be healed, when all the divided Ottoman nations are reunited under Turkey. These are the ten horns the Bible speaks of, which are on the beast. These will hand over their power to the Turkish beast, which was ruled by the Caliph, the successor of Muhammad. According to Wikipedia, the name Caliph is translated from the Arabic word Khalifa meaning successor, or substitute. Muslims often say the caliph is the substitute for Muhammad. But in the Quran, it is used to establish Adam's role, as representative of God, on earth. Did you catch that? The Quran says Khalifa is like God on earth. And the caliph is both a religious, as well as political leader. And he is a successor to Muhammad, and all the prophets. So not only does caliph, mean replacement for God on earth. But the Caliph is also the substitute for Muhammad and all the prophets. Muslims claim that Jesus was just one of their prophets. So the very seed the Caliph holds is not only as God on earth but substitute for Jesus as well. Amazingly the word Antichrist does not only mean against Christ but substitute for Christ as well. The title of Caliph matches this description perfectly. There is a reason why Satan's seat is in Turkey. It's because the Garden of Eden was located there. Remember Adam and Eve were the rulers of this world until they forfeited their seat to Satan. And Satan will give that very seat of Adam to the Islamic Antichrist. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God. Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect, 
in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden the garden of God. God is telling us not only that Satan is in Eden, but so is the Antichrist. An Eden, is in Turkey. Remember, Jesus said just as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. Guess where the Ark of Noah was located? In Turkey. Turkey is indeed the place to watch. The very color of Turkey's flag, is like a scarlet beast. And as we've discussed, the crescent and star is the very symbol Satan has chosen, to depict himself down through the ages, through false gods. Satan's chosen king, will rise from an alliance of Arab nations which include Turkey, Iraq and Iran. The reason why the beast is described as a mixture of animals, of lion bear and leopard, is firstly because it denotes the three old empires, which unite to form this beast. These were Babylon the lion, Persia the bear and Greece which included Turkey the leopard. But this mixture, also describes the Arabs themselves and their kingdom. Not only did John see the harlot in the desert of Saudi Arabia, but he also saw the beast, which was upholding her. There is a very good reason why the beast, was sitting in the Arabian desert. And why it was described, as a mixed animal. Because God, was describing the people, of the kingdom itself. The Arabs, take their name from Arabia, itself. The name Arabia, in Hebrew is, Ereb. Meaning a mixture, or mixed people, or mixed company. The Arabs are known as the mixed people. Because they are a mixture of all the races in the Middle East. Amazingly, God was describing the Arab race itself, as a mixed beast. Also in the book of Daniel, God describes the kingdom of the Antichrist, as a mixture of iron and clay. And the Hebrew word, used to describe this mixed kingdom, is the very word, Arab. Which is the Hebrew word for mixed. Daniel literally said, the kingdom of the Antichrist would be an Arab kingdom. The Bible describes another figure, called the false prophet. He will likely be seen as a religious leader. He is described as having lambs, horns. The Bible says he will rise from the earth or land. Which is in contrast to the beast, who rises from the sea, of Islamic nations. The opposite of the sea, is the earth. And the earth is actually a reference to the land of Israel. So this second kingdom, will rise from the conquered parts of Israel and Jerusalem. Which is why it's described, as having, two lambs, horns. And it's possible that this false prophet will be Jewish, and may even claim to be Jesus Christ. And he will do false wonders, like bring fire from heaven, which will deceive both Jews, and Muslims. And this false prophet will point to the Islamic Antichrist, declaring him, the true Messiah. And this false prophet, will deceive all into submitting to the Caliph, and his empire. And he will tell those in the Middle East, to set up an image, to honor the revived Islamic empire. And it deceives those dwelling on the earth, because of the miracles which were given to it to do, before the beast. Saying to those dwelling on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, who had the wound by a sword, and lived. The Bible doesn't tell us, what form, this image will take. But it will be built, to honor the revived Islamic empire. And the false prophet, will enable it, to speak. The Bible warns, that if any bow down to this image, of the Islamic empire, they will be cast into hell forever, with the Antichrist. The number 666, can be found in the very seal of the Ottoman caliphs themselves. Their seal is called, the Tugra. It contains both, a Hebrew, and a Greek number 666. The Hebrew 666 consists of the letter, Vau, repeated three times. And right on top of the Hebrew, is found a Greek number 666, which is the letter, Stigma, again repeated three times. Sometimes the caliphs use a pseudonym, next to their name, like Al Ghazi, meaning the warrior. And you can clearly see a 666 in this pseudonym. Indeed the name of the caliph, written in the Tugra, may very well be, the mark of the beast. For it contains both the name of a man, and his number. And also the mark of his empire, the crescent, and star. The Bible, compares the Antichrist, to a star fallen from heaven. Like Lucifer, who fell, and like the very Kaaba stone itself, 
fallen from heaven. Isaiah 14:12 says, How you are fallen from the heavens, Lucifer, O shining star, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. The very image of Lucifer, is the star, fallen from heaven. And the Islamic Antichrist, will use a star symbol, as a representation of himself. Which is why, we find the name of the Caliph, in the sun symbol. Because the 666, was a representation of the sun god. And we know from our studies, that the sun god is really the serpent, Satan. And by putting the Caliph's name in the sun, or star, Satan is declaring the Caliph, to be the 666. So now you know, the Ottoman crest, is totally satanic. For the crescent and star, has been Satan's personal symbol, throughout all of his seven kingdoms. And it's the very star, and crescent symbol, found on the Egyptian golden calf, which was worshipped by the apostate Jews, in the desert. And now this crescent and star symbol, of the serpent Satan, has become the very symbol, of the Islamic Empire. The very seal, of every Turkish president, is the eight-pointed, star, which is the very same star used, by Alexander the Great. It's no wonder God calls the Turkish Antichrist, a star, fallen from heaven. For that is his very seal. The Greek 666, which is chi, psi, stigma, has also been found, in the Bishmila, which is the name of Allah. And it's also been found again in the Shihada, which is the Islamic confession of faith, which is worn as a badge on the foreheads, by Muslims. The Bible tells of the terrible fate, for those who take the Islamic Antichrist's mark. Whoever worships the beast and its image, and receives a mark on his forehead, or his hand, will drink the wine of God's wrath, which has been poured unmixed, into the cup of his anger. He will be tortured, with fire and sulfur, in the presence of the holy angels, and the Lamb. The smoke from their torture, goes up forever and ever. There is no rest day or night, for those who worship the beast, and its image, or for anyone who receives the mark of its name. So to recap, do not bow down to the Caliph, nor swear any oaths of allegiance, to him. Do not take the mark of his name, as a stamp on your forehead or hand. Or wear his mark, as a badge on your forehead or right arm. And do not worship the image which he sets up, even though it speaks and you may be put to death or imprisoned, because of your refusal to bow to it. Rather believe, in God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ who died on the cross, for your sins. Call upon his name, and you shall be saved. Only Jesus, has the power to save. His name, is the only one, in all the world that can save anyone. And salvation, is found in no other. So cry out to God today. Ask him to forgive you, of all your sins. And believe in what he did for you on the cross, and you shall be, saved. John 3:16. For God so loved the world, that he gave, his only begotten Son, that whosoever, believes in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Please pray this prayer, today. Father God, I believe that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross, for my sins. I believe that he died, and was resurrected, and is coming back to judge the living and the dead. Father, I repent. Please forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart, and make me, your child. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have said this prayer, and decided to turn from your life of sin, and follow Jesus Christ, then you have become a child, of God. Please go and find a born-again, Christian church, where you can have fellowship with other believers. Thank you for listening. Please see our other broadcasts, on the end days. This program has no copyright, and may be distributed freely.